In this lesson, we are looking at carrying capacity. Here are our three top points and some guidance we are looking at. All right, so a population of organisms is the total number of a particular species in a particular place at a particular time. Now, many populations of different species make up a community. All right, so if we're looking at how these things fit together, a population is just one type of species. Many populations make up a community. Now, populations are dynamic. They change size, they change demographics over years and over seasons, all those kinds of things. So sometimes they include really large numbers of herd animals. Sometimes they can just be lots of individualistic animals that sort of lurk around together. Right, knowing a population size can assist scientists to understand the habits of organisms, all right, whether certain populations are thriving or just surviving, whether they're vulnerable to extinction and they need conservation efforts. Estimating populations, though, is incredibly challenging, not only because they are dynamic, but also because of the logistics of actually sampling them. So, you know, you're talking about tracking a flight of migratory birds. That's going to be really, really hard trying to actually get those animals that are hiding and get them in an, um, in an authentic way is hard as well. So considering the number of individuals may not actually be a logical measure. So if we're thinking about grass in grasslands, you're not going to go and count every tiny blade of grass and you're not going to count every tiny plant. So you might actually look at biomass as opposed to individual numbers. Um, you might also look at density as well. So the number of units per area or volume, depending on if uh, you're in a 3D or a 2D sort of plane. Population sizes change frequently, and that's due to regular and irregular changes in the abiotic and biotic conditions which are present in an ecosystem. So you might be talking just daily and monthly, so the sun goes down, different things happen, but then the next day it happens again. You've got your seasons throughout the year, but then you've got things like natural disasters and human interactions. So you might be talking fires, floods, droughts, human interaction of many kinds. The carrying capacity is the maximum population size that an ecosystem can support and sustain indefinitely, right? It's essentially where the ecosystem maxes out. It can't handle any more of a particular species within the balance of all the other interactions within the nutrient cycles and things like that, right? This is a measure that is incredibly variable and it's impacted by so many different things. It's dynamic, it's ever-changing. And you can see with lots of these diagrams, there's so many elements that will change it. Carrying capacity is limited by the abiotic and biotic factors, just like everything in an ecosystem, right? And because of these things, it usually limits the growth, abundance, and the distribution of a population. It's going to have an impact on the carrying capacity, right? These abiotic and biotic factors keep coming up for us. This is a really good diagram because it shows, yes, our population growth might rise, but eventually it's going to plateau out because it cannot fit anymore. It might have limited space. There might be a disease. There might be more predators in a particular region and, you know, low food supply, things like that. Abiotic factors which limit the carrying capacity are including but not limited to all those other types of uh, abiotic factors we are already aware of. Now, these conditions change substantially through the different seasons, the natural occurrences like the fires, the floods, the droughts, changing climate right, also going to contribute to that. Tolerance levels to these conditions are going to vary massively between organisms. These are the density independent factors, remember, and they impact a population regardless of how big it is. Biotic factors which, inf which influence the carrying capacity include, and there's a lot of them, all these types of things. I'm not going to read them all out. Any changes in one or many of these are going to impact the a particular population that can be sustained in an ecosystem. And these are density dependent, right? They will have an effect based on how many are in the population. Now, changes in biotic factors will obviously influence the abiotic, right? If we're talking population numbers of a herbivore decrease because um, there's a disease, then it might mean an increase in the producers available uh, at that trophic level to be eating. And that might be, you know, limited if there's no light available to actually help them grow. So this is obviously going to be able to work in reverse. If there's abiotic changes, they will affect the biotic factors. So if there's a bushfire, uh, then population numbers of a particular plant might decrease. You might not be able to cycle the nutrients through the soil properly and all the other um, producers will be affected. With so many factors at play, Again, this is a super complex layered situation, okay? Some of these diagrams might take you a little bit of time to digest. Now, keep in mind, these are all really theoretical concepts. They're great, 
but they don't often show us beautifully in nature or in these environments. So it's difficult to study in isolation in the field without all the other considerations being taken into account. That is why biology is so complex. There's so many factors influencing things all at once. If we try and grow paramecium in a test tube, you know, for a certain length of time, the carrying capacity will be reached, but we don't know whether that's because of lack of space, lack of resources, maybe it's both, we don't know, okay? Lots of field examples um, include, you know, to study these kinds of populations include walrus and sea lions, but we can only do that because they come on land to mate. So it does make it easier to sort of measure um, and therefore we can make an estimation on carrying capacity. And barnacles on the coast of uh, Scotland, there's some really good research papers about those as well. You know, they're reaching carrying capacity for that species, but are they actually a different species? You know, is the presence of another organism stopping them spreading? Is it competitive exclusion? Now, the carrying capacity is obviously tied to the most scarce resource in that ecosystem. So it's essentially that one factor that it's hanging on by a thread might be the tipping point for the carrying capacity of a particular organism. But you know for well that there are so many factors at play, so it's really, really hard to identify which factor is that tipping point or which one it is, um, you know, depending on essentially. All right, we talked about carrying capacity today.